Testing, testing. Okay, we're good to go. Hey guys, welcome to Radio Bonita. We're doing a special Valentine's Day edition today. We are going to be discussing some hot topics with uh, co-founder Ari from Brujas. Uh, this is going to be um, discussing the design forum that we got going on. We are going to be discussing as well as that. Um, Wages, uh, wages against housework. So let's go ahead. We're gonna call in Ari right now. Start it off. Hey, girl. We're testing it out. We're. Uh, Hey, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Awesome. How you doing, Ari? Hi, New Hi Brew House Worldwide Global Syndicate. How's everybody doing? Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're doing good. Yep, happy to be here um, talking with you, my dear. Um, how's your day going so far? I can see from, from the stream that you have a beautiful hair do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, it's Valentine's Day, so I wanted to get a little dressed up. Uh, it's beautiful out here. No clouds, 50 degrees. I don't know what's going on. I'm not really going to question it, but it's beautiful out here. How's your day going? Good. Um, I've been so excited about announcing the Wages for Housework Design Forum to the to the syndicate. Um, it's some concepts um, that have been in play um, since and you know, revisiting them, studying them with some of the founders of the Wage for House Federici and her international community um, in the Women Against Violence Research Collective. Um, so Brujas has had the opportunity to connect with them on, on a few occasions to learn, to learn from their organizing method and frameworks. And they are like us, you know, uh, just great role models and amazing people who have been dedicating um, their their lives to anti-capitalist struggle and to building joy um, in their communities and caring for one another and just observing, you know, the conditions of existence that we that we that we navigate every day. Um, so, yeah, should I? Yeah, should, I start, should, I, should I start by reading the, the design form invitation and then me and you can talk about wages for house wages against housework by Sylvia Federici or should we, um, wh what did you want to do? Let's give a little insight into what exactly wages against housework is. Um, so okay. we can give a little bit of background to our listeners right now. Um, so in your own words, what is uh, wages against housework? Great. Yeah. So Wages Against Housework was a piece, a political piece of writing um, published. When was it published? 1974, um, I believe, 1974 um, by Sylvia Federici. Um, she told us she actually was like in New York at the time, writing it on the train and stuff like that. Um, and essentially the framework calls the framework of the movement of which this piece of writing belongs to the wages wages for housework movement um, is so so the general framework is that women's domestic labor and care work provides the capacity for the laborers of the night of their time period the, who are of the manufacturing class people who go out to work in factories or go out to work in a, in a sur survey of other industrial jobs or um, service jobs um, is only possible, obviously, first by the reproduction of the workforce by women, right? So by having children. And we can see with the stagnation of the population and the emergence of now the abortion ban. Um, so there's always you know, a relationship between capitalism, the state, and its laborers. In her, in Sylvia Federici's Calvin in, in the Witch Text, she actually calls attention to the relationship between the Black Plague in Europe and how there was like an annihilation of the population. So there were so few laborers after the Black Plague that the actual workforce had all of this um, 
leveraging power, all of this bargaining power to actually demand for better living conditions. So after the Black Plague, you would actually see that the, that the workforce had, you know, um, like I said, more leverage and, you know, I would say fair, fair compensation um, for their work because there was not as much competition for jobs. So it's in the interest of capital for there to be um, competition for jobs, growth in population. Obviously, it's built into the into the fabric of capitalism itself, which is like that over time, things appreciate in value. So obviously, the appre appreciation of value in the economy, you know, when a house becomes more valuable over time, is also tied ideologically to the idea of the appreciation of a population, right? So the growth of a population. Right. So yeah, you feel me? Um, I'm gonna take a pause there. Whoo! Yeah, it was a lot. It's, that was a lot. It's, it's a big, endless. It's, a big, yeah, it's, it's endless. Yeah, it's a big. It's a huge, huge. I feel like it's a rabbit hole. The deeper you get, the more you want to know, know about it. What was um when you first was when you first became interested in this topic? What was it that you were so passionate about, or why did it directly? affect you or do you have any experiences in your own personal life where you can relate to wages against housework thank this is such a sweet question and i definitely want to hear your answer to that too just because i know like every time we learn about this framework we get it like every time in brew house workshops this framework it's always such an amazing learning experience um so i definitely want to hear your response to that too and mine to be honest, um, when 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 um, when we founded Brew House in 2014, it was kind of given like, oh, these are women advocating for themselves in a male-dominated space. Um, and over the over the few years uh, after we founded the collective, we kind of wanted to make more state state beyond the obvious, right? Like because we kind of seen how the whole women's the future is female was kind of commercially co-opted and it was becoming this kind of like trendy Instagram thing mm -hmm. that was like urban outfitters and dickies and vans girls and things that wasn't actually representing the core of 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 our passion and so so that's when I linked with you know Brujas had gotten all this all this energy and all this um momentum and then and then I and then I linked a, f a few years after with Ripley Soprano, Antonio Perez, some organizers from, from my high school, from Beacon High School, who we had been in the struggle, like talking about anti-capitalist frameworks, you know, since we were teenagers. And we sort of took the opportunity to like talk about other things besides gender, like prison abolition and harm reduction, health, um, all other real things, life, very the, real le the less problem. obvious things that that brew house are about but then i was like well we never actually spoke on our position about what it means to be women what women's relationship to the commercial economy is what women's what our relationship to our families and to each other are as women like we've never actually dissected that it was always sort of given as this obvious thing like oh that's the women's streetwear thing like or that's the women's skate thing but it's like, but what does that mean? You know, because right. womanist has been such a crafted concept. You know, we're we're trained over, over you know, 10, 20 years on what being a woman is. It's not just this natural thing. So, I was thinking, oh, what's the best way to interrogate Bruja's position on gender? So then I started doing research. I was like, well, what's the Marxist position on, on um, on which on witches? Is there is there somebody who's done research into the actual material experience, material and Marxist being like a interchangeable term in, in this in this context, meaning like the economic, real, the opposite of spiritual, the material, the welfare, the utilities in your house, the, the chicken on your table, the clothes that you wear, like the material existence, matters of the of the material. What is that perspective on um, on, on women and witches. And I found this text, um, Caliban and the Witch by Sylvia Federici. And me and you spoke in the car, remember about Caliban and the Witch? I do, yeah, that was a crazy conversation. 
Yeah, that was a crazy conversation. I'm glad we had that. As always. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, so that was it. And now is is come the time. You know, we sort of workshopped this idea in 2020, but now has come the time to really put it out there. And women's women's gender Sorry, women you, you gender kinda, labor you cut out a little and bit there if you don't mind repeating it, does that. that make sense like we never spoke about it so now i think it's like our time to like really really interrogate and from a personal level which you know then i'll relay the question back to you you know it's like i have such a close relationship to my mom and um Bruas has been so so supported by my mother as everybody knows you know for so many years and uh, Brew House is like deeply influenced by my mom and her unbelievable, creative and passionate and brave way about the world. Um, so in a way, this is a project really dedicated to her and her contributions and like all the things I wish I all the pain I wish I could have taken from her. Mm-hmm. All the pain that I don't want to d- don't want to repeat in my life in a way like disrupting the generational cycle that obviously women experience of like how men treat us, how the economy treats us, how, you know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I just grew up in a tradition, like in my, my, you know, South American Catholic traditional household where like my mom did everything. And like, when you go to Uruguay where my family is from, you know, you're expected to just bring the coffee to the men while they sit around, you know, and you're expected to just, you know, do the housework and you're expected to have the children, nine children. You know, my grandmother had nine children and she died prematurely because, to be honest, bearing nine children is a little bit too much for the body, you know? I heard that, yes. And you feel me? So it's very, very personal. And in a way, for a long time, we've been using this, 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 the, the encouragement of each other, the support of each other to really do that healing work, to really understand our relationships to our families, to ourselves, to our position in the world. So it's, you know, it's an opportunity for all of us to think about, you know, what expectations we grew up with as women. Exactly. And I'm sure everybody yeah. can relate to this in one way or another, you know. Personally, I, 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 I so yeah. I look tell at me, it. tell me more about um what what speaks to you about this project. Right. Yeah. How I look at it is like you know shots coming from the government, like the government really just not even the government capital. The capital really just tries to fuck us as women, in my opinion. Right. And they're always trying to take from us. They're always trying to tell us what to do. And this really spoke to me on many levels because I'm at that point in my life right now where, you know, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of a lot of shit. And I, th- I think that us being the collective that we are definitely have the power to spread this type of knowledge and have people see the same vision that we have. And... After sh- after reading this uh, passage, you know, there's a couple things that really stuck out to me. Um, for example, I have this one quote that I really liked from the passage. It, it was, uh, to demand wages for housework does not mean to say that if we are paid, we will continue to do it. It means precisely the opposite. To say that we want money for housework is the first step towards refusing to do it. That really stuck out to me because... I never thought about it like that, you know? We really, mm. we do have a choice. We have the choice to either obey and continue the cycle of uh, machoism. I mm-hmm. believe that's, that's the correct word I'm looking for. Um, or we could, you know, take our power back. And I'm all about taking the power back, you know? Yeah, I, I feel the power in your voice as an organizer. It's it's such a pleasure to see the see the growth of chapter two and, and to see, you know. Let me read let me read one of the quotes you pulled too. Okay. Um to say that we want wages for housework is to expose the fact that housework is already money for capital. The capital has made and makes money out of our cooking, smiling, fucking. At the same time, it shows that we have cooked, smiled, fucked throughout the years, not because it was easier for us than for anybody else, because we did not have any other choice. Our faces have become distorted from so much smiling. 
Our feelings have got lost from so much loving. Mm -hmm. Our over-sexualization has left us completely desexualized. Right. I love that one. And, yeah, and it's important on this day, too, because what's happening, you know, it's like the lingerie lines are going crazy. You know, like restaurants, what, else, what, other, what else is coming from this, you know? It's, yeah, it's, it all stems back to just capitalism. At the end of the day, it's, it's a scheme. It's a money scheme. Today is a big money scheme, and we're standing for something different. Right. Um, and so I'll say one interesting thing about the framework of this writing, too, is the wages against housework is basically saying by identifying the labor that you do on the daily that is not respected, that is decommodified, that is not compensated, you recognize that and then you have the power to refuse it. So I don't know if you, did you ever have your mom or like, well, I'll say my mom would get fed up with just the overload of, of resources. And she would go on strike. She would say, I'm on mom strike. Oh, she literally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom used to do that stuff too, actually. Matter of fact, now that you're talking about it. It's right? Mom, it's mom a, strike is a thing. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a full time job. And just as so, a job, you definitely get like, a little overwhelmed with it. Right? And so when we would see, when we would experience the mom strike, that's exactly what Federici calls for in this piece to say. It's not the wages for housework, it's the wages against housework, which means I know, we know that there are much more complex and interesting ways of organizing resources that don't have to do with um, our individualized little kitchens, our prepackaged little individualized food. There's a long history of women in the last century, since the 20s, trying to create new ways of thinking about how to support and sustain our people, you know, the people, our community. And, you know, it might not be convenient to capital to have it be more of a cooperative or communal thing, but it might be better for us. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that the wages against housework framework is really about inspiring people to refuse labor and you can see that in the Brujas um, position to stop modeling for corporations and campaigns right. and saying, okay, the wages against housework, it's like Brujas against commercials. It's the same thing. She was like, we're just saying no until we can figure out a model like the world syndicate where we're like have small businesses that support each other, like X Pizza supporting Radio Bonita, Radio Bonita is doing what we can to support X Pizza, et cetera. Chapter two support chapter one supports dirty magazine supports, you know, our other, our other sister collectives. And like, we're just trying to do something else because yeah. as we all feel it in our spirits, it's not sustainable the way it is. So it's about building a new community in my opinion, you know, like, um, like you said, sustaining other people, putting people on, making sure everybody's good that you care about. And you know, it, it, if it's genuine, if it's organic, it'll grow. It's mm. science. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. And we've been, you know, working through a lot of a lot of pain that came with with all of that commercial and media and editorial exposure. And I think that's also a big part of of this of this project is to really uncover what were some of the matrices we were put, we were thrust into. It's a beautiful concept, right? The idea of women exiting the domestic sphere and being self-determining outdoors women, you know, outdoors people on their skateboards, mm -hmm. making stuff happen, organizing, being powerful outside, right? Um, and you could see that also in like some of our peers framework too, like the, the skate kitchen, for example, like their name comes from this idea of like, oh, women are supposed to be in the kitchen. But then they, they, they called skate kitchen to be like, take it and flip it, you know, I and like then it. You'll see the same with like the skate like a girl um, organization, which is, you know, they're trying to say, oh, you you do you you're not good at skating. You skate like a girl, but then they flipped it and said, oh no, nah, this is actually um, powerful. Exactly, yeah, like, exactly. Taking their power you know, back. So kind of flipping it and then, you know, taking the taking the, the narrative back into our own hands. But it's complicated when the narrative gets used for commercial purposes, you know, and you'll see like 
people it would be even as transparent as there was a, a skate influencer who was promoting the sale of washing machines the other day on Instagram. I was like, this is it. Like, this is crazy because, and this is my final word on the whole idea of progress, which is like, there is a tendency in the way that we're trained to think that we always have to grow, progress and improve. And like, you'll see that even in this, which is like wages against housework. Like we need a better, model for cohabitation and for supporting life on earth right and then so we'll come up with all these new ideas and da 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 but progress in some ways has its limitations as a framework and i think that the idea of relationality and the idea of difference are really important so we can relate to each other through our difference and that's the foundation of love to really to really close it out for my give give the mic to you the foundation in my opinion of love is the acceptance and the relationship to difference right so you'll always never you never be able to fully possess right i'll never be able to like be like oh this person that i love is and me are this one thing now unless you have a child maybe right um, but even then, that person is their own person, right? Yeah, big facts, big facts. I think a lot of people. <laughs> right. So it's like it's never it's 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 this impossible feat to to possess difference, but to relate to difference as opposed as opposed to obsessing with progress, right? Mm-hmm. As if by 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 taking on the wheel of progress, we're going to be able to eliminate difference it's not possible right so we're not going to be able to eliminate difference in the world but i do believe that through accepting difference and through through relationships and through sharing a deep deep sharing of differences and of experiences we we're 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 on the right path for to, for, to love better you know yeah. to be specific i agree yeah i think uh there is there is a, a little passage in uh in the reading where it was like stating how people confuse love nowadays with, you know, like you were saying, possession. And Mm -hmm. I I think it's a a, a pretty widespread thing where people are a little lost on how to love unconditionally nowadays. It always has, Mm -hmm. love comes with conditions like, oh, I'm going to marry this guy for money. Oh, I'm going to marry this girl because she looks good or because she can cook really well. Like, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, that is not love. That is Mm -hmm. the opposite of love, you know? Right. And did you, uh, you pulled the passage on, um, oh, did we pull the passage on marriage? It was a good one. Everyone should read so funny Everyone that, you see that, that was a good one because I, uh, I think that was the first one I pulled. Let me see. Yep. Okay. So it says, many of us still have the illusion that we marry for love. A lot of mm-hmm. us recognize that we marry for money and security, but it's time to make it clear that while the love or money involved is very little, the work which awaits us is enormous. This is why older women always tell you, enjoy your freedom while you can, buy whatever you want now. But unfortunately, it's almost impossible to enjoy any freedom from the earliest days of your life when you're trained to be docile, subservient, dependent, and most important, to sacrifice yourself and even get pleasure from it. If you don't like it, it's your problem, your failure, your guilt, your abnormal abnormality. That was that was a good quote. I think that was in the beginning of the reading, and that's what really set, set the vibe off for me. I was like... Oh, I'm about mm-hmm. to sit down. This is about to be a good one. I'm married to the mob. I'm married to the brew house mob. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Above all else. Uh, okay. Um, all right. I'll read you, or I'll read another passage and then um then let's talk about the design form. Yeah, let's yeah, definitely hop into that. Okay. Wages for housework is the only is only the beginning, but its message is clear. From now on, they have to pay us because as females, we do not guarantee anything any longer. We want to call work what is work so that eventually we might rediscover what is love and create what will be our sexuality, which we have never known. And from the viewpoint of work, we can ask not one wage, but many wages. 
because we have been forced into many jobs at once. Our housemaids, prostitutes, nurses, shrinks. This is the essence of the heroic spouse who is celebrated on Mother's Day. We say, stop celebrating our exploitation, our supposed heroism. From now on, we want money for each moment of it so that we can refuse some of it and eventually all of it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, overall, and it's a great... Let's read the other quotes you pulled. Okay, okay. Uh, let's you got see. it. it is, um, uh, we finished uh, now. The next quote is bringing coffee. Okay. Is bringing coffee to your boss and chatting with him about his marital problems secretarial work, or is it a personal favor? Valid question. Is mm. the fact that we have to worry about our looks on the job a condition of work, or is it the result of female vanity? Mm. Also, very valid question. I think we all know the answers to both. Mm. There's another. <clears throat> you want to read the next one? You want me got it? You got it. All right. They know that this is the most power, powerless position in society, and so they don't want to realize that they are housewives too. This is precisely their weakness, a weakness which is maintained and perpetuated through the lack of self identification. We want to have. We want and have to say that we are all housewives, we are all prostitutes, and we are all gay, because until we recognize our slavery, we cannot recognize our struggle against it. Because as long as we think we are something better, something different than a housewife, we accept the logic of the master, which is a logic of division. And for us, the logic of slavery. We are all housewives because no matter where we are, they can always count on more work from us more fear on our side to put forward our demands and less pressure on them for money. Mm. Since our minds are directed elsewhere to that man in our present or our future who will take care of us. Whoa. Yeah. I think that was all. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, I'm just going to say it like there's been a lot of critique on us even trying to create a business out of this, out of the skateboarding movement that we that we that we rightfully created um there was a lot of foundation a lot of pe people in california and on the west coast before us who were advocating for women's rights but when it in skateboarding but when it comes to the moment that we look that we look we're looking at which is like a huge trending and a huge rise in popularity of women skateboarding across the board not only on a ground grassroots level at the skate parks you see women now but in competitions, in commercials, as in sponsorships, in companies, the idea of us being able to create a foundation for ourselves to continue this work as a business and as a business cooperative, right, has been critiqued over time. And I think it's very tied to this idea that we should always be, oh, volunteering, 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 because we're women, you know, and how could we ever deserve compensation or self-determination and economic freedom for our immense contributions to the world. So, you know, it, it should be said that, of course, you know, there is a separation between brujas. This is people who are, you know, spiritual and, you know, choose to practice spirituality and definitely charge for their services all across, all across the world. And then what we do, which is, you know, what we do, right, which is we're educational, collective so we do stuff like this where we hash out ideas and really talk about our experiences and read things together we design cool stuff um, that represents the ideas to make it accessible to more people by creating design accessibility so i think um the wages for housework design forum invitation you know is this attempt at refusing selling out right refusing that our labor is you know exploited by design and and speak about about these conditions of of women's labor in 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 intelligent and beautiful ways um so do you want to read the should we let's ping pong on the design forum invitation yeah for sure let's uh do you want to give a little background detail about what exactly the uh, Wages for Housework Design Forum is? Yeah. Okay. So 
the idea is that Brewhaus has over the years produced special collections that really deep dive into issues. So like I said earlier in our interview, this one is about talking about gender and about labor and everything we just discussed. Mm -hmm. So uh, this special collection will be encouraging our members of, of, of whom are incredible artists to participate in creating graphic design, um, performance design, um, musical sound design, um, to create this project, um, wage it, the, the Brujas Wages for Housework uh, season. So we'll have obviously what we do, you know, some clothes, We'll present it creatively, which what was you know always part of how we how we present our design work. Is it are we gonna are we gonna I'm not even gonna speak too much on it because I don't want to leak any of the ideas that we've already developed. But there's been a lot of a lot of design um, and creativity on this topic, and we want to put put it together and offer the World Syndicate an opportunity to to collaborate with us on design and really make this a global experience. The in, the, the exploration, a, a globally interrogated experience. So we'll be inviting members from Paris, members from California, members from Miami, members from New York City, chapter one and chapter two, um, from Mexico to, to submit and present this work together. Hell yeah, that sounds super exciting. I'm very excited to see how everything plans out and folds out for that. Yeah. Um, bueno, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's get into a... You want to start it off? Okay. No, you start it. The Brewhouse World Syndicate, Wages for House Design Forum 2023. Perfect. All right. Consent is the active aesthetic strategy of commerce 2023. Resistance is a typical aesthetic strategy of art, but we also use our imaginations to form work unintelligible to the battle between sides paragraph or paragraph La or yeah paragraph by paragraph let's Perfect. do it labor is the commerce of performance taylorism the science of managing movement on factory production lines and facetune the app that allows for the fast digital editing of facial affect strategize with shadows of co coercion and consent alike performance art is an active aesthetic strategy of resistance to subconscious social programming. The, cro the program becomes intentional, forming a relationality of to labor. Great. The program becomes intentional. This is like, I'm s this is what I'm saying. Like when you create a performance piece, like it's like almost like, especially within the avant-garde practice, I feel like people like know that like you're supposed to act a certain way and then they like design a performance to like risk to be to resist that you know like to just like spaz out and glitch and like like the like the flucked dance collective for example mm -hmm. like you know you ever just see like some crazy performance art where like there's like shorties like on the floor like spazzing and like glitching out and you're just like what the heck is happening yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's supposed to represent like we're programmed and like what if i the same way that labor tries to get me to perform this task over and over, send this email, smile, take this call, you know, the same way that that, that performance becomes labor, performance will become the anti-labor. And that's that's obviously, you know, performance is, is going to be centered in, in the design form as, as the framework because it becomes this anti-labor, this disruptive way of moving our bodies essentially right fire 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 brew house fire hell yeah hell yeah <laughs> okay so this quote a rhizome ceaselessly establishes connections between semiotic chains and semiotic means symbol symbolic chains organizations of power and circumstances relative to the arts sciences and social struggles a semiotic chain is like a tuber that's like a potato or something like that agglomerating very diverse acts, not only linguistic, but also perceptive, mimetic, gestural, and cognitive. Domes sorry. Domestic and re reproductive labor are invisible commercial performances. Mother, sorry, you said something? 
Hello? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, you still there? Yeah. All right. Mothers never gave ne mothers never get back in full the love they give out. Instead, it circulates as profit. Because children are the future of capital, as consumers and laborers, women are the mothers of capitalism as well. Brujas, like Wu-Tang, are for the children. Y young women, both fetishized for childlike effect and capacity for childbearing, when consenting to childbearing, to sex, or to the performance of skateboarding for commercials, create an undeniable force in the rhizomes between performance, labor, commerce, consent, art, resistance, and reproduction. The slavery, plantation, housekeeping, shackles, forced birth, rape, sale, and torture of poor African, Black, and Native women occurring in the colonized Americas and West Indies during the, ninth, during the 17th and 18th centuries. The witch hunting, public burnings that preceded it and enabled the surplus capital for Europe from night sorry, from 1450 to 1750 to both industrialize and colonize. Why are these not explicit aesthetic directions for the brew house wages for housework collection despite being the historical context that precipitated the condition of women's modern exploitation? They are. Bruja's theory has called attention to the way that spectacle of commercial media has folded women into their propaganda. The effectiveness of their imagine imaging consent relies on their outcast. The pre precarity of women laborers worldwide creates the context, context by which their consent and commercial spectacle. The very violence made against them is fetishized. Mm. Brujas speak from multiple positions, but especially the experience of having set the femme skateboarding trend off from the margin while watching it travel to the commercial center. Therefore, it is this commercial domestic world that worked to capture us, that we use against itself aesthetically, beginning simply with cleaning logo flips. Oh, and then we have another, we have the prompts on the third page. Yes. We can definitely, you want to get deeper into that? We definitely can. Oh, yeah. You wanna okay. Do that? You want to oh. skip to that or you want to? I got this, the top, I got the top of this next page and then you can start with the questions. Um, so, Bruas are strong organizers, posers, our models, are talented. It doesn't matter. But we do seek the information and connection that allows for clear self-determination for ourselves and our communities. We have achieved that through study and practice, and we do oppose the exploitation of women through the simple refusal of participation in commercial spectacle. To design, write, and self-produce have and always will be the ephemera of the process of collective study and self-determination that is streetwear. We invite you, members and allies of Blue House World Syndicate, to participate in the Wages for Housework Design Forum from 2023 to 2024. You are invited to submit artwork, either an object, clothing, song, or writing. And the presentation and publishing of this design will be supported and reviewed by Blue House World Syndicate. Y'all heard that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. I mean, oh my God. This this one lady already submitted the most amazing design, you guys. I can't wait to tell y'all, but I'm not going to say it on air. Design forums just opened and they're already booming. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Right, yeah. Let's, let's get into these prompts. So the prompts more also published in 2020 are the following. How does the labor of the domestic space facilitate the movement of commodity commodities, services and resources circulated in the economy? How has this labor been allocated historically and in your personal experience? That is prompt number one. What are some of the relationships between the indoors and the outdoors? What role does the women's skateboarding movement have in the larger struggle for the self-determination of sentient beings and Earth's ecosystem? Ooh, that's a good one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's the question. That's, Bruce is like, guys, come on. Like, we got this. Like, 
we could literally lead the future. Like we already have, like, it's such a beautiful, like women's skateboarding is such a powerful movement, but it needs to be bigger than skateboarding. Like we literally need to use this amazing way of being in the world to organize the revolution period. Hell yeah. Okay. How has the history of women's reproductive experiences impacted economic history? How have state and economic interests impacted women's reproductive determination? What relationship does slavery, unwaged work, and care work have to have to the reproduction of people, the economy, gender, race, and art, including skateboarding and performance? Mm. How do we rhizomatically interpret commons and enclosures, individuality and collectivity? the family and the public, inside and outside, the underground and the mainstream? In what configurations of our imaginations does Brujas thrive? There are no visual aesthetic boundaries to this piece. However, the direction references led by the work of Brujas New York City Chapter 1 in 2020 are domestic products and marketing. The international 1970s wages for housework movement Born in Flames, Scarface, Home Economics Textbooks, and Master P's Bout It, Bout It. There we go. So there's the invitation to join this awesome project that we will be working on, you know, for the next year. Um, but our first publication, our first series of designs are being published in April. So, you know, it's important that everybody who already has something they've been working on finish that up tight submit it let's coordinate make sure that it gets that that we present it in the way that we want to that we keep um you know organizing and pushing the pushing the boundaries of our art practice um this is a dream come true uh now to be working um in in this in this format and so i i thank you so much for hosting this space for us today likewise thank you so much for your time and uh getting a little bit deeper into what exactly we're pushing to do in the near future i'm very very excited to see everything fold unfold and um let's get let's get to work guys let's let's get the ball rolling i'm so excited okay bless so you guys enjoy the rest of your day over there yeah you too ari thank you so much for your time and you have a good valentine's day thank uh, you happy valentine's day my love goes to you thank you i'll see you soon all right bye bye Thank you guys for uh, listening in on that conversation. Uh, that was a little bit more details, like I said, into our wages for housework um, and our design forum that we are opening up. Next up, we got Super Sport coming on real soon, so just stay tuned and uh, give us a few. Thank you. <laughs>